So when we take a look at meditation, we're really looking at how can we turn on different brain circuits within our minds to activate these different neural pathways within our central nervous system. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech Bruce Psych, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm your medical doctor confident, Dr. Cody Rall. So today we're talking about something pretty interesting, and they are energy centers throughout our body. And about this time last year, I talked about using the Muse headband and how you can use different focus points to calibrate with the Muse headband and use those as reference points of focus as you move through your meditation. As I've learned more, as I've looked more into meditation, as I've learned more about neurofeedback, it's becoming very obvious and apparent that using these different focus points throughout the body is an excellent roadmap to being able to meditate using the Muse software or do neurofeedback, classical neurofeedback with MindLift software. So what's going on here? We're talking about the autonomic nervous system, okay? Um, the autonomic nervous system is the subconscious part of our minds. There's all these anatomical, physiological things that are going on in our bodies throughout the day that we don't even pay attention to. Uh, that could be like digestion, our immune function, it could be um, circadian rhythms, all these different autonomic systems going on that we have no conscious control over most of the time. One of those things is breath. And when you think of breath, your breath is just normally going in and out as you go throughout your day. But you actually can influence your breath consciously, and that's why they always talk about the breath is one of the only routes into the autonomic nervous system when it applies to yoga, when it applies to meditation. So consciously affecting your breath by pulling into your diaphragm or expanding your chest, these different movements under conscious control pull air into your lungs. And these have all types of interesting effects on the autonomic nervous system. Uh, it can increase the oxygen, obviously, within your bloodstream, which changes the pH levels. And this actually induces different neurotransmitters in your brain, like it can actually release GABA, which is the same neurotransmitter that alcohol works on, so it calms you out. So, you know, a lot of coping mechanisms for people that suffer from anxiety in, involve deep breathing, and that's because you can consciously affect your autonomic nervous system, which is causing that fight or flight response to cause you to have anxiety and control that through breathing. So what I'm talking about is using these different focus points to actually control your autonomic nervous system. Um, Dave Asprey of Bulletproof Coffee often talks about, you know, we always talk about using our minds to control our bodies, meaning that, you know, we can control anxiety uh, in a top-down approach using breathing techniques and meditation, but it also goes the other way, meaning that our body affects our minds, meaning that our microbiome, our diet, our exercise, these things all very dramatically affect our moods. And when you think of meditation, if you're not grounding yourself early in the day as a preventative technique, you can become scattered and become overwhelmed and very anxious during the day. So having a regular meditative practice in the morning can be very important for maintaining the stability of your mind. And I think that really is coming from these influences on the autonomic nervous system. For example, the adrenal glands on top of our kidneys release cortisol, epinephrine. These are all stress hormones that are within our bodies. And if that is in the autonomic nervous system and happening subconsciously, it's working against your mind. No matter how much you are trying to uh, tell yourself everything's okay, if you're having more cortisol and epinephrine being released from your adrenal glands throughout the day, it's going to cause you to be anxious uh, if you're not very good at controlling how those hormones and those different neuropeptides are expressed within your body. So when we take a look at meditation, we're really looking at how can we turn on different brain circuits within our minds to activate these different neural pathways within our central nervous system? We have these different nerve plexuses all throughout our central nervous system. If you look at the spine, there are, there are different uh, clusters of cell bodies from the autonomic nervous system that go out and innervate our inner organs and a lot of things that are out of our conscious control, things like you know, releasing bile from the gallbladder or um, producing testosterone or estrogen within our reproductive systems. These things are all under uh, subconscious control from the autonomic nervous system. And reading material 
like taking a look at chakras or Joe Dispenza's work on energy centers and how you can use those to influence your meditation and taking a look at neurofeedback, this is making more and more sense. So it's really interesting because it reminds me of anatomical and physiology um, classes that I had in medical school talking about these different central nervous system pathways and never really like linking it to, hey, meditation actually influences these pathways. Uh, we know from Harvard studies that taking a look at genetic expression that relaxation meditation turns on different pathways in metabolism, immune function, longevity. These are all top-down approaches, the psychology actually affecting the biology and causing these tissues to release different uh, hormones and other proteins to affect our bodies. You know, that really goes down to the core of the DNA literally being turned on, expressed to RNA, creating a protein that goes on the uh, cell body or released into the bloodstream into the rest of the body, affecting our entire physiology. So it goes very deep right down to the genetic and epigenetic level. So we're talking about these influences over the autonomic nervous system. And so taking a look at one of the first energy centers, uh, which is called the root chakra, it's right at the base of your spine. And that is innervated by a plexus called the um, inferior mesenteric plexus. And so this has pretty dramatic effect over different reproductive organs like the penis and the vagina, but also over the anus. And so these are very like uh, primal uh, reproductive organs. And if you think of that energy, it's this primal desire to reproduce. And it really reminds me of uh, what Napoleon Hill would say in his research is that you know, for his uh, self-improvement success research is this concept called um, sexual transmutation. You can take that sexual energy and redirect it to very productive activities to be quite successful in life. So it's like this very primal um, energy that you can harness and, you know, not only have it influence your meditation by having you feel very grounded, but also help you feel grounded as you move throughout uh, your daily activities as well. So that's the root chakra. Now, if you move up to um, the next one, the sacral chakra, that's innervated more by the uh, superior mesenteric plexus. And that has a lot to do with uh, control over the, the colon and uh, digestion. So you can think of like um, elimination. And when I, when I think of this area, the superior mesenteric plexus, um, it has a lot to do with being able to digest and feel and the best time for digestion is when you're feeling safe. Um, so it has a lot to do with uh, social events. Imagine like uh, meeting with your family and just being at the dinner table and um, talking and eating food and being able to be relaxed. Well, what happens when you get fight or flight response activated within the body and go between sympathetic and um, parasympathetic nervous system in the autonomic nervous system, what happens is that all the blood gets diverted from your gut to your skeletal muscles and you're like ready to fight or flight, right? Your pupils get dilated, you're ready to run. But you need to be relaxed for a good digestion and elimination. So it's important to um, feel very centered and relaxed and loved and within a social community. So that energy center has much more to do with feeling safe. At next energy level up is more below the navel and that has to do with uh, the celiac innervation. And that's where you find these adrenal glands on top of the kidneys that release cortisol and uh, epinephrine. So this really has to do with uh, willpower because uh, that area can really cause that fight or flight response to uh, do good. So you know, you've got the, the sexual energy that can uh, get you pointed in the right direction. You have the next higher energy level that makes you feel safe. But then the next is like this willpower to get through uh, and protect your loved ones and um, do everything that you need to be uh, to do to be successful. So you can think of um, the celiac plexus innervating the uh, adrenal glands as well as some other liver enzymes and some things that are important for the fight or flight response. The next one they call the conduit between the lower energy centers and the higher energy centers. And this is your heart chakra. And this is obviously innervated by a lot of uh, cardiac plexi, plexus uh, innervations from the spine. So again, the autonomic nervous system. And the way that you really can activate this one is exercising compassion and empathy. This is really going to release a lot of things like oxytocin in the body that's gonna make you feel bonded to those within your life. Be thankful for what you have. Have a lot of gratitude for everything that's coming into your life. 
So you can feel very grounded from the lower three energy centers, but really like bring a lot of flavor and energy into your life through the heart chakra. And I really recommend uh, to my meditation and neuro meditation clients to really exercise that use of that energy center to um, bring a um, very pleasurable experience to meditation in general. Up from there, they call this the throat chakra. And within there, you have your thyroid gland and your parathyroid glands. And um, the thyroid gland is really like the body's thermostat for maintaining temperature uh, and metabolism. And the parathyroid glands control uh, calcium levels within the blood. Um, you know, I, I find the description of this one a little bit more uh, removed because they talk about if you've got this energy center up, you can speak your heart, meaning that if your heart is in the right place, this actually opens up your ability to speak truth and feel uninhibited. Um, but obviously it's got uh, hormones that are affecting uh, your overall energy levels through the thyroid hormones and metabolism. So I don't know, maybe when people feel like they are healthy from having a healthy thyroid, they're able to speak their mind better. Up from there, um, a lot of meditation practitioners talk about the pineal gland and this is a weird one because it uh, expresses serotonin and melatonin and these are very powerful neurotransmitters that can affect uh, sleep and circadian rhythm. And I'm gonna have to come out with more material on that because there's a, there's a whole can of worms to open up when it comes to pineal gland. So moving forward from there, you've got your brow chakra. And this is a really interesting anatomical area because in there you have the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. And I remember learning all about this in medical school. The pituitary gland has a dramatic effect over the rest of all the rest of the hormones. Uh, they release the precursors to uh, sexual re reproduction hormones. There's something called the HBA axis, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal gland axis. So it really has a lot of control over uh, cortisol as well as maintaining blood pressure. And the ancient texts talk about having uh, this energy center uh, open up for um, feeling like everything else is running efficiently and feeling like you are engaged and present because everything else is healthy and synchronized. So that area can be very important for focus and synchronization of everything, all the rest of the systems. And then moving up from the brow chakra, you've got the crown chakra. And this one actually has no anatomical correlation because they talk about it being a focus point above your head. And this is supposed to be where you can uh, tap into to get divine inspiration and inf information from, from the universe. And in my opinion, even though this doesn't have a strict anatomical correlation, you know, you're actual experience of that point in your, like directing your reticular activation system is doing something and it's turning on different brain circuits. So there's definitely anatomical and uh, physiological correlations to uh, redirecting your attention to that area. And whether or not you're getting information from the universe, I can't say for sure. But what I really wanted to deliver in this video is that there are actual anatomical correlations to these focus points and that we know from more and more scientific studies that you can affect the autonomic nervous system through attention and different meditative techniques to influence your overall feeling within your body and this can enhance your meditative techniques and how you feel during the day. In the next video I'm going to talk about how you can actually incorporate using these different focus points into neurofeedback practices to really enrich your experience in those practices. So thanks so much. Um, click that next video right here when it's up and I'll talk to you again in the next video.